it's a different show, you know, when it's your audience to when it's not your audience. There's people listening there who are kind of making their mind up about you. They play that really big, like, boom, and they say your name. Liam Payne. When you actually get out there and take in that atmosphere and see that sold out O2 Arena, there's no feeling quite like it in the world, I'd say. When I was a teen growing up in Wolverhampton, I mean, I think my main dream, obviously, was becoming a pop star. started out singing on different karaoke machines around the world in different places and my dad used to say to me every year, you know, we'll get you in front of Simon Cowell one time and see what he thinks of you. Unfortunately I got turned away, but probably the best decision that ever got made about me at the time I was distraught, but looking back now I'm, I'm glad it happened. I mean it's been the most amazing thing literally since I was 14 having a fan base. I was just a normal kid in Wolverhampton who didn't have that many friends, wasn't really that well known or liked or aware that, I don't know. And then to go to this place where you have these people that are always constantly, like they know more about you than you do about yourself. It's quite crazy if you think about it. People still call me One Direction in the street, as it's like my like second name almost. Um, so trying to find your identity away from that was, was really difficult and I never expected to have the same sort of success as we had when we were in the band after it. We don't all speak to each other all the time. You know, having spent five years together, it was a lot of time in each other's pockets for guys who didn't know each other when it first started. I mean, I know a lot, I had a lot of backlash from fans actually for saying that I didn't really have anything in common with Harry. And unfortunately it's true, but if you actually look at it from outside, it's more obvious than you think. If you look at the styles of music that we have, the way we put our campaigns together and all these different things, they're completely different kettles of fish. I mean, I can remember the meeting where we actually decided to close um, for that time. And it was a really hollow meeting, it was quite sad, but there was also you know, a very big sense of relief as well because it had been five years worth of really hard work and non-stop work for all of us. I mean, the last two years for me have been really difficult in a sense of I've not just been a music artist. And even in being a music artist, there's so many things involved. And then on the side of that, I mean, I've been designing clothes, I've been modeling, uh, I've been in and out of doing auditions for acting, uh, trying to be a dad at the same time uh, and have a personal life. So when you're trying to juggle that many things at once, you know, the, the, you only have a certain amount of time to do so. So I think I've done an okay job of it so far. Pretty tired a lot of the time. <laughs> Um, but you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm super grateful to be in the position that I'm in and just, you know, to have all these different amazing opportunities and this really weird life to live. It is difficult. It, it is massively rewarding at the same time being a dad. You know, it's a massive credit to Cheryl, really, uh, as a parent, I have to say. You know, she is with him 24-7. Uh, and, and for me, it's comforting knowing that I'm out on the road and she supports me wholeheartedly, but also, you know, takes amazing, brilliant care of my son. Um, which I couldn't ask for more, really. Capitals Jingle Bell Ball for me is actually more or less the start of Christmas. It's actually the countdown to like break for a lot of um, artists and pop stars. You know, I mean, they're always great audiences. 
you know, they're, they're, they're there, they're excited, they're seeing loads of different artists at once, which is always really great. And yeah, I've, I've enjoyed every single one of them that I've got to do so far. It's the O2 Arena, my favorite place to play in the world out of every single stadium arena or anything I've ever played. You know, there really is that moment when you're, you're walking out to stage and there's no feeling quite like it. You know, you're scared, excited, concentrated, feeling all those emotions all at the same time, and then you can finally get underneath the stage and you can hear that crowd roaring and everybody's waiting for you to go out there and do your, your bit. And then you sat there for a minute and there's almost like a moment of silence where it's just you and you're holding your microphone and then you finally pop out and everything disappears and it's all okay from there. Oh, my bedroom floor You're close to seeing something different now You want to break a chest to fix it now Oh, baby I think my best advice to my younger self would probably have to be, you know, just enjoy it a little bit more. When I first started off, I was such a serious person and I was ultra serious about everything. I took everything seriously. So I think if you're not having fun, how can everybody else have, not have, you know, be having fun with you? And I think that's, yeah, that's probably the advice I'd give myself. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy your evening. Good night, good bless.